to Michigan State, lost the following week to Iowa, and as we mentioned at the top of the show, since then they've turned things around. Minnesota will receive J.D. Carlson getting set to kick it away. He's the junior out of Tallahassee, Florida. Leads the Big Ten in scoring. Ricky Foggy is the man in the middle, dropping back deep for Minnesota. Carlson hands it on the team. We're about to get underway. A high kick, rather short. Some question as to who would take the football. Taken down by Bentley, a wide receiver, and he was nailed by Randy Stark. Markel Fleetwood steps out of the field for the Golden Gophers of Minnesota, the Sears diehard starting lineups. Fleetwood who leads the way, second leading rusher on this football team. Mark Smith leads the team in rushing. King is a solid fullback. Hopewell and Tinglehoff, possession receivers. The tight end Evans has good size. They tried him at center a year ago. First down for the Gophers. Short of the 20, near the 18. Smith on the carry. Over to make the tackle, Martin Davis, with help from Trip Welburn, a gain of about four. The rest of the offensive starters for the Gophers of Minnesota. Chris Boehm on the offensive line at center, very efficient. Hendrickson and Harrison have good size. Hendrickson's 290 pounds. Ballard is the best lineman on the field for Minnesota. Great feet, great size, improving every week. Second down for Minnesota. Receiver makes the catch. They shove him back close to a first down. Milligan and Anderson on the stop. Let's take a look at the Michigan defense. This defense leads the Big Ten in sacks. T.J. Osmond on the nose of the defense up front. Hutchison is coming back from a back injury. He is the best defensive lineman when healthy. Milligan solidifies the inside linebacking core. He, too, re rebounding from an injury. Davis and Simpson are outside. Key and Dotton on the corners. Trip Welburn is a Kodak All-America safety this year. First down for Minnesota near the 30-yard line. Hopewell in motion. Not a whole lot there. Smith on the carry. Evans, Mike Evans made the stop. No gain. Wayne, one of the things you'll see Minnesota do all day is change up their formations to try to keep Michigan off balance. That's, that's not really being effective at that point in the game. What Michigan needs to do is to realize that Minnesota is going to run the same basic plays, but they're going to run them from a multitude of sets. Talking to the defensive coordinator, Lloyd Carr, from Michigan yesterday, he expressed how many formations that Minnesota actually uses. It gets kind of cumbersome. Double tights now for the Gophers on second and ten. Fleetwood. Keswick Joyner. Inside Wolverine territory. Down to the 47 of Michigan. Williams and Key on the tackle. 23 yards on the pickup. We mentioned Joyner has some quickness up then. And Wayne, the key to this play, Trip Wellborn, the strong safety, whose zone would normally be right there in the middle, was up on the line. You see Wellborn coming in late in the picture. He was up on the line faking the blitz, which is something he does a lot of. Minnesota took advantage of that. Wishbone formation on first down. Carter hammers off the right side of the line, inside the 45, down to about the 43-yard line. Looked to be a gain of maybe four. Anderson was there along with Osmond. Anderson, eight tackles, three solo stops last week against Illinois. He is the leading tackler on the team. There. Markel Fleetwood. They don't throw the football an awful lot, Ben, but he has been efficient for what they've asked him to do. Well, that's the key to the whole thing. You don't need to throw it a bunch. You just need to throw it well. Second down now. Fleetwood on the roll. This is what worries defensive coordinators. 
Fleetwood is close to a first down. Lance Dotton forced him out of the near side. Well, Wayne, when you're coaching against a player like Markel Fleetwood, you put in all your basic schemes, you have your entire package in there, but then Markel Fleetwood breaks down the entire package by getting outside. Now the big part of this play, watch the pulling guard out front, number 61. Not a devastating block, but just enough to spring Fleetwood up into the secondary. And this guy, once he gets back there, is dangerous. Third down, less than a yard to go for Minnesota. Carter. Good work up front by the offensive line. They opened up gaping hole, and Carter steamrolls for about four. Down to the 33-yard line of Michigan. Murray and Milligan on the stop for the Wolverines, but a first down for the ball control. Gophers make it a gain of five. Wayne, this Minnesota team offensively is very diverse compared to what they were last year. With Daryl Thompson, the big thoroughbred in the backfield, they gave the ball to him the majority of the time. Now with him gone, the offense has become much more balanced. They lead the Big Ten in ball control. Looking to get to the outside, had to turn it back into a crowd of Wolverine defenders. Gain of about a yard. Hutchison made the stop on the play. Interesting uh, player. They really feel very strong about Chris Hutchinson that he is their best defensive lineman and one of the great Michigan defensive linemen, but he's had a back injury all season long. Number 97 in your picture right there. And it's a puzzling back injury in that he can play for long stretches without ever having it bother him, and then all of a sudden it can flare up and it can sideline him completely. Bo Schembechler was telling us yesterday, you never know when it's going to go. He played one play in the Rose Bowl last year and had to come out for the rest of the game. Timeout Minnesota on second and nine. We have a break of the action. The early going from Ann Arbor, Minnesota and Michigan are scoreless. MW dealer. And by Budweiser, the king of beers with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a bud. Wayne Larrabee, Ben Bennett, talk about attendance. This is the place where they put 100,000 in here every week of the college football season that Michigan plays here. Today, the 97th straight game, they've been over 100,000. Michigan annually leading the country in attendance. Kind of feel like you're in a Grand Canyon when you play here. Second down, about nine. A Fleetwood on a draw! Close to the first down, inside the 25 at the 22-yard line. Corwin Brown came back to make the stop. And Fleetwood shake it up briefly. And Fleetwood has had some problems this season with injuries. He's been banged up, and he's been in and out of the lineup. Scott Schaffner, the backup, has played off and on this season. He's a very solid player. Now, this is a designed quarterback draw. You see the lineman going downfield, picking up the linebackers. Watch the very end of the play. Watch the shot on the arm. Boom, right there. You can see the hit at the very end. He fumbles the football. Boom, right there. You can see his arm get kind of pinched in there. Scott Schaffner is out of quarterback. Mark Smith escapes for a moment. Gets inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line, but Trip Welburn was there to pick him away. Schaffner, at quarterback, a junior from Westchester, Ohio, won the job in the spring and started the opening game of this season. But Fleetwood came on, played well, and has had the starting job since. And it's ironic that Fleetwood would go out with an injury early here in the first period of play. Last night, John Kudekunst, the head coach at Minnesota, was telling us that Markell is as healthy as he's been in many weeks. Second down, Schaffner. Keswick, Joyner had it for a moment, but so did David Key. Broke it up near the 10-yard line by the Michigan cornerback, and it is for Minnesota, third down. Early in a game, when you step off the sidelines to replace an injured QB, you're not always as warm as you would like to be. David Key almost makes Minnesota pay for the injury to Markel Fleetwood. This is a guy, along with three other players in the secondary, that has started 34 consecutive games. These guys have got some experience. 73 of Minnesota's 147 first downs have come on third down call. Schaffner not going to get one here. Good coverage downfield, and Martin Davis 
pursued from behind. He is fourth in the Big Ten in sacks, and he executes a sack right there, his sixth of the season. Martin Davis, good size on the outside, pretty good quickness. His major is sports management, and he's managed all season to get to the QB. As you mentioned, his sixth sack. This is a guy that is relentless in his pursuit of the football. Managed to get to the nice turn, man. 37-yard <laughs> field goal attempt by Brett Berglund. And Minnesota, as they did a year ago, reached the board first in the battle for the little brown jug. Gophers lead the Wolverines 3-0 with 9-19 left to go in this first period of play. Last night in our production meeting, Ben Bennett said, we have got to focus in, we've got to isolate on the Michigan safeties because they are so active. Well, here's what happened. And you're about to, to see what makes these guys arguably the best tandem in college football at safety. Hustle, determination, and drive. <laughs> Not to mention quickness. All right, here is the kick by Brent Berglund. A pop fly and a kick taken by one of the upbacks. McGee, the tight end, down on his knee near the 33-yard line, and that's where Michigan will put it in play first down. Markel Fleetwood warming up on the sideline. Went out of the game a moment ago with an injury. Brett Berglund's 37-yard field goal. Now has 50 points this season. His long was 59, and he put uh, Minnesota on the board, capping the drive. And again, Fleetwood, we're told, will return this afternoon. He missed the last two plays of that drive. Elvis Gerbach, a quarterback, sophomore from Willow Lee Hills, Ohio. Gerbach, Derek Alexander. Penalty markers are down. Alexander goes down near the midfield marker. Jackson and Heath made the stop. Got a penalty marker down to the field. We'll start with a Sears diehard starting lineup for uh, Michigan. There is... Elvis Gerbach has done an outstanding job as a sophomore. Vaughn leads the Big Ten in rushing. Bunch, a solid fullback. Alexander and Howard are sophomore receivers who've made some mistakes but have great potential and are excellent receivers right now. Dave Debolt, good size at tight end. The center, Matt Elliott, has stepped in for the injured Steve Everett, done an outstanding job. Dingman is a first team Kodak All America. Doring and Screpinex, Screpinex 322 form the tackle positions. <laughs> penalty against Michigan. Offsetting penalties, Michigan holding, Minnesota offside. And they will do it over again, so it's Michigan football first down from the 33. Double tight for the Wolverines. Penalty marker down, and Vaughn gets out to the 35 on a gain of two. Sunbold, who's playing with a broken hand, made the stop. Penalty marker down. Indication for offsides against Minnesota. Take a look at the Minnesota defense. They play the uh, stunt 4-3. Isaacson and Sunbold inside. Both are tough on that nose. Williams and Skeeter Ockrey. Ockrey playing in place of Bryant. Anthony Bryant has returned home. His grandmother is ill. William Collins, freshman middle linebacker, stats and Heath on the outsides. Fisher and Mays, the cornerbacks. And your safeties, Sean Lumpkin, will be all Big Ten when this season is over. First and five for Michigan. John Vaughn again gets the call. And it appears he has the first down on a gain of about six out to the 44-yard line. Isaacson made the stop. John Vaughn is playing with a tender ankle. His first five games, when healthy, look at his production in the last four games. And the, at the bottom, the difference. What he's done the first five in the last four games. John Vaughn isn't getting the ball as much. Well, the difference there is the tender ankle he twisted in the Michigan State game. On first down, Gerbach, intended for Howard, a bit overthrown. Coverage provided by Derek Fisher in the secondary of the Gophers. 
when we talked with Gary Bowler yesterday, who doubles as head coach and offensive coordinator, he said that Michigan was going to have to throw the football a little bit more today. And I'm sure Elvis Gerbach was happy to hear that. No huddle offense. John Vaughn. About 10 yards. Very close to the first down. And Gopher territory near the 47-yard line. Frank Jackson of the secondary. Russ Heath from the linebacking court. Team up on the stop. Wayne, we mentioned at the top of the telecast, in the victory last week against Illinois, Michigan finally played Michigan football. They were tough on defense, they ran the football well, and they didn't make a lot of mistakes. That was important for this program. Ricky Powers in a tailback and plays the ball on first down. Make that third down. Powers gets the first down, but a penalty marker goes down. Ricky Powers, true freshman out of Akron, Ohio, had his best day last week. Rushed for 113 yards against the fighting Illini of Illinois. And that's a good defense to get over 100 yards rushing on. Absolutely. When you, when you rack up big yards against Illinois, you're doing something. Holding the call against Michigan. So this drive has been penalty plagued as Jerry Hendrickson, the Big Ten official, lets us know. There's John Gutekunst. Succeeded Lou Holtz at Minnesota and has had to reconstruct the program. Really, really had to put things together. And he's got a very young squad that given time to develop and mature in a couple of years is gonna be pretty good. He feels very confident that the players that he has now are gonna be the foundation for a very good football team in the future. They're actually pretty good right now, Wayne. Three receivers in the game for Michigan with two running backs. Fourth down for Michigan. <laughs> On a punt formation for the Wolverines. Eddie Ascona. Ascona out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Only six punts have been returned against Michigan. Grant. Slips by a defender and gets maybe two yards on the return out to about the 17-yard line. David Key made the stop on the play. Wayne Larrabee, Ben Bennett. We are in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The big house. Michigan Stadium. Better than 100,000 on hand. Minnesota and Michigan doing battle for the little brown jug. Markel Fleetwood back on. That's our sideline reporter, Brad Lefton, a Michigan graduate student. First year graduate student. His major is Japanese studies with an emphasis on telecommunications. We'll hear from Brad a little bit later. They start in the bone to the Gophers from the 17. Carter out to about the 20 yard line, gain of three. TJ Osmond made the stop on the interior portion of the Michigan defense. Wayne, yesterday when we talked about the loss of Daryl Thompson to the offensive coaches from Minnesota, they said even though we lost a great player, it may have made us a better team all around because now instead of having one workhorse, everybody in the offense has got to get involved. This is why they use so many different sets and give a defense so many different looks. Double tights in the game now for Minnesota on second down. King, a fullback in motion, Fleetwood optioning. At nowhere to option. Michigan with David Key supporting from the secondary and Neil Simpson in the linebacking core pretty much snuffed it out. Loss of about two. Great running back here, Daryl Thompson, now with the Green Bay Packers. A great running back for Minnesota for four years. Look at what Minnesota did in the ground game with Thompson and what has happened this year without Thompson. Minnesota throws the football a little bit more. They obviously don't run as effectively. Thompson was a great All-American. This guy is a thoroughbred in every sense of the word. He was a stud duck. Third down and about nine now for Minnesota. Fleetwood. Intercepted on the play. First down, Michigan on the first turnover of the game. Neil Simpson, the junior from Highland Park, made the interception. Mark 
Michelle Fleetwood shaking up on the play once again. Simpson with his first interception of the season. Well, Markel Fleetwood makes the right read here. His receiver is open. He just doesn't deliver the ball high enough. You can see the receiver behind open. Simpson just trails his man on the sidelines and shows some good wheels there. I'd like to see that out of a linebacker. Makes the grab. Watch this. Okay, I see John Vaughn do this. Watch, watch me put on my show. Hey, he showed some good hands. There first go. down, Michigan at the 26. Gerbach. Grounds it in the general direction of Ricky Powers. Skeeter Acri on the pass rush pressure for Minnesota. You hate to put, if you're Minnesota on playing Michigan on the road, you hate to put your defense that is really scrapped and hung together this season. Put them in this position, giving Michigan the football first down at your 26. Minnesota has a very young defense. They play the 43 stunt, and they should feature the middle linebacker. And although Collins has, leads the team in tackles, he's very susceptible to play action. Second down and 10. Gerbach may be changing the play. Michigan at the nine. Frank Jackson finally chased him out. He is a special freshman. Ricky Powers out of Akron, Ohio. 17-yard gain. Getting more and more playing time each week. And this is one of the reasons he makes things happen. Sees the opening, makes a good cutback, reverses field completely. Let me tell you something. This kid is going to be a good... doesn't have the right personnel in the game. He needs a timeout. Five minutes, 38 seconds left to go. First period. Minnesota has the lead, but Michigan is knocking on the door. Is this Larrabee, Ben Bennett, Michigan. First down and goal to go situation at the Minnesota nine-yard line. Howard, the lone wide receiver. fullback inside the five near the three-yard line gain of about six yards Andre Davis made the stop for the Golden Gophers Michigan goes without a huddle we've seen that a couple of times now in this drive Gerbach I think wants motion from Desmond Howard now he's going to the end zone of Howard Carlson has made his last 63 point after touchdown attempts. Steve Everett will be on the snap. Kent Solom will hold. And the Michigan Wolverines on a three yard touchdown pass from Elvis Gerbach to Desmond Howard. Eighth touchdown of the season for Howard have taken the lead. They don't call Desmond Howard magic for nothing. Gerbach throws this ball beautifully to the corner of the end zone, but watch Howard lay out and get it. Folks, that is concentration and athletic ability coming together for you on that screen. Only takes one foot in bounds in college football. Elvis Gerbach knows that he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage. He says, I'll lay it out there and let's see. Yeah, he'll get it. No problem. That's a great feeling. I, I gotta tell you, there's not a lot of feelings like that in the world. To throw one up and know you maybe have thrown it a little bit too far and have an athlete with the capabilities of Desmond Howard go after and pull it down. Then you go back and say, yeah, I put it out there. I knew he'd get it. 
Well, I'll tell you, there are two sophomores, and they've got a lot of football here at Michigan left in them. That combination will ring through more often than not the next two years. You ought to see him on a basketball court. Kick carrying toward the far side. Karam's out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. The penalty marker's down. They'll make him do it over again. Trying to keep it away from Fred Foggy. Foggy averaging 21.6 yards per return for Minnesota. He's the man who lines up in the middle. There's number four, Fred Foggy, his brother Ricky. We saw at the top of the show. Helped lead Mich Minnesota to a victory here at Michigan back in 1986. His brother was a big-time player. This guy was a magician on the football field. I've seen films of him, and I saw him on TV one time. That guy could deal like any Vegas black that deal. Michigan will try it again. 5.03 left to go. First period of play. And Foggy's the type of player, number four, that we had spoken about that makes things happen. When he's in a football game, he's going to get his hands on the football somehow. And most of the times when he does, he makes something good happen to the guys in red. Fred Foggy back deep now up around the 15-yard line. Ball on the tee. Carlson puts the toe to it. Across the 25-yard line, Chuck Rios on the return. Wayne Ware made the stop. Minnesota goes first to 10. Let's head down to the sidelines now. And our sideline reporter, Brad Lefton. Brad? Hey, you remember Charlie Finley. He's the guy that gave us orange baseballs and yellow striped footballs. Well, this is his newest invention. It's called the double grip football. Now, I know it looks like a normal football, but it's not. You see, it has these inverted dimples, almost like a golf ball in texture. Normal footballs have protruding dimples. The Michigan team, they love this thing. The players say it grips better. The equipment people say it conditions better. They debuted it in their win against Illinois here last week. They're using it on their offensive possessions today. But you know what? Minnesota hasn't embraced it with the same enthusiasm. On their possessions, they're still using the traditional ball. Ben you think you could get a good grip? <laughs> I'm waiting for him to make one with radar to avoid the, avoid the bad guys. Yeah, to avoid the interceptions, as, right. As soon as Finley comes out with one of those, I'll endorse that ball. <laughs> James King got a carry for two yards. Second down for Minnesota. The football near the 28-yard line and go for territory. 7-3 Michigan. Four and a half minutes to go. First period of play. Dinglehoff at the top of your screen. That's Grant on the bottom and wide receiver. Chapter at quarterback. Set for a loss by T.J. Osmond. The ball came loose, but the officials ruled the play dead before the fumble. No fumble. Minnesota will have it on the 17. Let's head to the studio for our first update from Tim Brando. Tim? All right, Wayne, we're going to talk about the bluegrass right now. You know that stadium, Commonwealth Stadium, where the grass is really brown? Well, right now, Kentucky is singing some blues for Florida. 9-7 score. The Wildcats scoring on Freddie Maggard's 73-yard screen to Al Baker. We'll keep a watchful eye on this one as well as the other games across the country as the day progresses. Well, Tim, as I'm sure you're aware, it's been a, a rough week down in bluegrass country with the death of Aladar and Northern Dancer this week. People take their horses seriously as well they should down in the bluegrass country of Kentucky. I'll tell you what, it's been, a, it's been a rough year for horse racing. This is Foggy on a reverse. Out to about the 25-yard line. David Key recovered to the Michigan defense to make the stop along with Chris Ball. There is Fred Foggy. Fourth down for the Gophers. And Dean Kaufman, number 49, out in front formation, averaging 37 yards a kick. And folks, watch Trip Wellborn returning this kick. Wellborn leads the Big Ten and punt returns. Gonna let this one go. And the Caroms to a stop inside the 35 at the 33-yard line. We've got Michigan and Minnesota. John Gutekunst and company doing battle. Coming up later today, the big one, Penn State, 18th ranked against top-rated Notre Dame. South Bend, and then we've got Auburn and Georgia, what should be an intense SEC contest tonight in prime time. Now they're waving to you from the big house. But folks, when they start the wave here, trust me, it's a wave. <laughs> yeah. this, this is what's known as a tsunami, short for the tidal wave. 
first down for the Wolverine. Durbach going to the air. Oh. Tough catch. Jeez. Desmond Howard. First down near the 48-yard line of Minnesota. You saw him on the athletic catch in the end zone. Watch this across the middle. A quick play action fake. Gerbach spots Howard. Whoa, look at this. And Desmond Howard, we told you we'd call him magic. He reminds Michigan players of another wide receiver they had here a while ago. A guy named AC. Jared Bunch right into the midsection of Gary Isaacson and Skeeter Akreen. Pickup of about four. I'll tell you something, Ben. They like that football, and it's got to help right here on this catch. I'm going to tell you what. This boy right here would have caught this football if it was made out of rubber. I don't care if there's dimples on it or what. <laughs> this guy is going after the football when it's in the air, and most times he's going to come down with it. That's a new Charlie Finley football that Michigan is using here. Not much there for John Vaughn. Sophomore from Florissant, Missouri. Michigan will face a third down just inside the 44-yard line of Minnesota. Williams and Jackson on the stop for the Gophers with Stranone Mays helping out. And Desmond Howard. Three receivers. Howard at the bottom of your screen. Alexander at the very top. Yale Van Dyne in the slot at the top of your screen. Third and six. Desmond Howard, he got his 5'9 frame up in the air, but just a bit overthrown. Wayne, when you say it's a little too high for Desmond Howard, it is a little too high. This is a guy that at 5'9 has a 39-inch vertical. Folks, that's, <laughs> that's a big spring right there. Only seven of Eddie Oscona's punts have been returned this season, one of them earlier today by that man, Kevin Grant. going for the coffin corner gets a nice roll Michigan has it well covered first down Minnesota the eight yard line and, it, and as good as it is to down it at the eight yard line had they let it bounce a couple more times they might have had it a little farther down Gary Moeller boy what a tough undertaking he agreed to last winter when Bo Schembechler decided to step down as head coach at Michigan he follows a legend, and earlier this year, we were here, what, about a month ago? They lost to Iowa. It was their second home loss in a row, as you pointed out, Ben, in the open of the show, and it was really rock-bottom time. People were wondering. They had some injuries. People got healthy. So did the Wolverine record. They've been on a roll ever since. They lead 7-3 late first period. James King, the fullback, Junior out of Watertown, Minnesota. Davis and Evans were there to shove him back. He may have gotten a half yard. And Wayne, we talked about that Michigan is finally playing Michigan football, and you just mentioned the return of some injured players. The big return was John Milligan, an inside linebacker. Now, he's a good player, but the thing that happens when he comes back is that he makes Eric Anderson, who's the leading tackler on this team, he makes him that much better. And there's just much more cohesiveness on this defensive unit. Markel Fleetwood has taken a couple of shots and been shaken up twice here today. On second down, Smith. Helmets came loose on that play. Out to the 10-yard line. All they got was about a yard. Alex Marshall on the stop. Mark Drabcheck. Helmet came loose on the play. There is Coach Gutekun. First period winding to a close, and that's going to do it for this initial quarter. Gorgeous afternoon in mid-October. It's Michigan, 7-0, seven 7-3 to three Wolverines as we head to the second. Wayne Larrabee, Ben Bennett, we are at Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, and the Wolverines at the end of one lead 7-3. Gophers of Minnesota facing a third down, about eight yards to go at their 10-yard line. Play one. James King has a first down at the 21-yard line. 
Chased out of bounds by a trip well born and Martin Davis. There's a drop check I mentioned a moment ago. Mark drop check. The offensive line and his helmet knocked loose earlier. Folks, you want to talk about conditioned intensity. Helmets off, hey, I don't care. I'm supposed to block this guy. I'm going to knock him around as best I can. Helmet or no. Rob Jex, a senior out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. First down, Gophers. The Minnesota 21. Carter. Carter has run hard here today in this first half. Picks up maybe seven yards. Anderson and Osmond on the stop for Michigan. Minnesota band made the trip over from Minneapolis. Wait, to this point in the game, Minnesota, with the exception of the turnover, has played the type of football they want to. They've run the football well. When they've had to throw it, they've thrown it short. They've completed some of them. They just haven't made the big play yet. Somebody's got to step up and say, it's time to get something going. Chuck Rios, the long setback. Lead one on an option. Out to about the 31, maybe the 32-yard line. He's close to the first down. Beta Murray made the stop. Coming up on new time for NFL game day this week. Special time, 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. And, of course, game day to be followed by prime time. And get you caught up to date on what's happening in the NFL. And then tomorrow night, this is going to be a good game. Pittsburgh's defense, I think, overall this year, one of the best. I don't care where it ranks statistically. It's one of the best, one of the toughest in the NFL. Boomer Esaias at Cincinnati have been struggling. That game is for first place in the AFC Central Division. And, Wayne, a battle between Bubby and Boomer. Who would have ever thought it? Third and short, and it looks like Markel Fleetwood has picked up the first down going over the right shoulder of his center, Chris Bohm. Well, the Gophers want to do today, Ben, is, is exercise some ball control, not make mistakes. Now, they gave up a touchdown on a short 26-yard drive following an interception in the first period of play. But aside from that, they've been able to execute their game plan for the most part. And the key to the whole thing for Minnesota is to keep their defense off the field. They're young and they're small in comparison to the Michigan offensive line. That's the big key today. Harder in motion. This is Chuck Rios. Nice spin move to get away from Osmond. And he's got about two yards. Osmond, the principal defender. And, of course, we're getting to that time of year when you start thinking Heisman Trophy. Who is your Heisman candidate? You want to register a, a vote? Call 1-900-786-2255. 95 cents per call. Who's your pick, Wayne? Well, of that group, I like either Bienemy or Sean Moore. I could go with either one. You know, everybody at this point thinks Rocky is Ismail is the favorite. I think you've got to pick Sean Moore. He's number one in the country in passing efficiency. He's just done it all. He's run for a bunch of yards and a bunch of touchdowns. I think he's the best all-around player in the country. Fleetwood off play action, penalty marker down. Fleetwood had his big tight end open on the play. Pat Evans. Pass thrown behind Evans. Penalty marker down near the offensive line. It might be for holding. I think it's offsides against Michigan. Chop block against Minnesota is the preliminary indication. Illegal block by Gophers. Let's see if we can pick it up. Watch the left guard to the right-hand side of your screen, pulling down, you can see, get into the back and the legs yep. of T.J. Osmond. Folks, that's not only illegal, that's just bad football. In the interior line, from five yard, from tackle to tackle, you're allowed to hit somebody in the back if they have their back turned to you, and it's not a clip. But you cannot go for a player's legs when he has his back to you and he's engaged with another player. Like I said, that's that's not only illegal. That's just you don't do that on a football field. 15-yard penalty, and it is a second down and long yardage situation for Minnesota. The kind of situation the Gopher offense cannot afford to be in. They don't have the real big play players on the perimeter of their offense to get them out of a hole like this. Paul Hope 
Hartwell in motion. Second down. Shovel feed. Ahead to Rios. And Rios gets some of it back. A gain of about eight yards. Milligan and Davis on the tackle along with Wilbur. Not the prettiest pass in the world, but this goes down as a completion. He drops back, looks for his fullback, and just pushes it to him. And you see Rios, the freshman, get up in there and get some of that yardage back that they lost on the penalty. Fleetwood had a rough afternoon thus far physically. Shake it up a couple of times. Runs the option well, although he was not a pure option quarterback in high school. That was the point the coaches made with us last night. They didn't necessarily run an option in high school. Ran a regular offense, but he has adapted well to the option. Calls for a timeout here with 11-16 left to go in a first half that has Michigan on top. ESPN's College Football, Minnesota and Michigan, is brought to you by McDonald's. You know the one. It's McDonald's for food, folks, and fun. And by Thrifty Car Rental, because it's your money. Call 1-800-4-CARS or your travel consultant. Wayne Larrabee, Ben Bennett, third down for Minnesota. They screen it out. This is Carter. He needed 16, got a bunch, but not 16 yards worth out of that play. John Milligan made the stop. Here's Trip Walburn. We talked about Michigan's special teams are really something special, especially in the return game. And this is something that Gary Muller has said, maybe we sacrifice other parts of the football game to improve on, but boy, they have really paid off. Welburn leads the Big Ten upon returning. He is fifth nationally, averaging 14.4 yards per return. Dean Kaufman on a punt formation. Welburn has more return yardage than any other Big Ten team. Welburn himself, low snap. Good kick. Fair catch signal by Welburn. And Michigan will take over near the 26-yard line. Take a look at it. Kick returns, tops in the nation. Fourth in the nation of punt returns. 13th in net punting average. Not bad. What taste? People don't realize how important special teams are, Ben, and that they can really set up an offense. Most people watching football take special teams for granted. And the only time they pay attention is when something goes wrong. It's actually a third of the ball game, and Gary Muller has chosen to emphasize this third more than a lot of other teams have. Ricky Powers is the lone setback on first down, Michigan. Good quick move as he cut it back off the right side of the offensive line and powers out to about the 33-yard line. Gain of appears to be six. Stats, Davis, and Mertz made the stop for Minnesota. And Powers just become the third true freshman, I'm talking true freshman, not redshirt freshman, in Michigan history to rush for 400 yards. Second down. Powers make that uh, Jared Bunch, the fullback. And he has stacked up on the play. Good coverage that time by the Minnesota defensive front. This is the second year Minnesota has run the Michigan State style of defense, the stunt 4-3. Sunbolt and Jackson make the stop. And they tell me it really took George Perlis a couple of years, even George Perlis, the master of that defense, to put it in and uh, get it to the point where the kids really understood what they were doing up at Michigan State. It's a learning process for both the players and the coaches. Third down, about three for Michigan. He may have had some trouble picking that ball up in the sun, but that's one I know Mr. Tebow would like to have back. Grant drops back deep for Minnesota. Kevin Grant averaging 16 yards per punt return. And he has gone on once again for Michigan. Punt formation. Ball hits across the 40. Wolverines have it covered, and Oscona is going to pad his average on the roll. Down to about the 28-yard line where the Gophers will put it in play. First and 10. 8.53 left to go the first half. 
at BASF. We don't Wayne Larvey, Ben Bennett, and about 100,000 plus on hand. Some young, some old. <laughs> There's a youngster right there. Well, we haven't had a, an exciting first half thus far, Ben Bennett, but uh, I wouldn't go to sleep on this game yet. Oh, absolutely. These are two very good football teams, very well coached and very talented, doing exactly what they've worked at all week. They're running the football well. They're playing solid defense. First down for the Golden Gophers at the 28-yard line, Minnesota Territory. Lots of motion right now in the Minnesota offense. Mark Smith out to the 30 be a little bit farther let's head back to the studio Tim Brando all right Virginia and quarterback Sean Moore watch a little chicanery here Brian Satola will actually throw the ball to Derek Dooley and UVA takes a 21 to 7 lead in the second quarter oh by the way Wayne Larrabee tell your partner Ben Bennett his ACC TV pass record is still alive but only for now you know, Tim, we were talking about the fact that uh, Ben's records are falling uh, faster than the temperature here in Michigan. And it's like people are taking personal personal pleasure in erasing my name from the record book. Second down, Fleetwood is overwhelmed. Second sack of the game for the Wolverine defense, Marshall and Hutchison. We talked about Hutchison and his ability at the top of the show. Look at him right here. Just beats a double team, gets in there, and this guy is the type of football player that even if he didn't know what the defense was, he'd still be a good player because he has great football instincts. He has a tremendous awareness for what's going on around him and how to be in the right place at the right time and do what needs to be done. Third down and 19 yards to go now. Three receivers at the bottom of your screen. That's foggy in motion. Late one trying to get it out to the flat. Foggy drops it. There's a penalty marker down on the far side. They were just trying to get Foggy out on the flat and try to make somebody miss. Trying to get him out there one on one. Take a guess where this was going, folks. <laughs> yeah. Going we have illegal motion. Offense declined. Fourth down. Jerry Hendrickson. I'll tell you, John Gutekunst mentioned it. I said it earlier. Minnesota has to stay on schedule offensively. They cannot get themselves into third down and long yardage situations because they just don't have the kind of people that are going to break it open against this uh, Michigan defense. Confirmation time. Dean Kaufman. Griff Welburn will make a play on this. Out to the midfield marker, where he's stung back by Martin Mathis. Let's go down to Brad Lefton on the sidelines. Brad? Hey, did you see that big gold blue banner that all the Michigan players touched as they made their entrance onto the field today? If you didn't see it in today's game, you've probably seen it before because it's a tradition that's been around well longer than any of the officials could tell us pregame. But that banner has been tarnished twice recently. In the 70s, the Ohio State players ripped it to the ground when they came out. And then in its only non-football appearance about 10 years ago at a Gerald Ford speech at the basketball arena, it disappeared. That was a replica we saw today, but the tradition continues. We'll tell you about another tradition later in the fourth quarter that won't be around next year, though. All right, thank you, Brad. First down at the midfield marker. This is John Vaughn. To the 44-yard line on a gain of six. Joel Stantz, the linebacker, makes the stop. All right, can you imagine when Ohio State ripped up that banner here? That must have been a war. I imagine they had to delay the start of that game. 105,000 people were probably not very happy on that afternoon. If I was a visitor here, I would leave that banner alone the eye on second down. Vaughn. And the Gophers say they've got it. Ball comes the ball came loose and the Gophers say they've got it. Jackson, Frank Jackson made the recovery and apparently the officials have made no indication as of yet. John Gutekunst, you see his reaction. Minnesota football. Frank 
Jackson on the recovery, a senior from Detroit, Michigan, no less. John Vaughn running hard inside. You'll see him put his head down at the very end of the play. Boom, he takes his shot. The ball's loose. Minnesota jumps right on it. Andre Davis and Russ Heath were the principals that pried it loose, and Jackson able to pick it up. So a break, the first turnover of the game by Michigan. Minnesota, the Gopher 43. Smith the lone setback. Smith gets the call. Big call. Smith to the sidelines. Out of bounds near the 14-yard line of Michigan. Griff Wilburn and Beta Murray. 43-yard gain. And Ben Bennett, that was a well-executed play up front of the offensive line. This play was made popular by the Redskins. Call, call, counter trade. Watch both offside linemen pull and clear the way. Smith with good speed, switches the ball to his outside arm. He's just going for what he can get. The two All-Americans, Vader Murray and Trip Wilborn, have to run him down. But if you're Minnesota, this is what you want to do. You force a turnover, now you've got to capitalize because as big a difference as it makes on the scoreboard, it makes a tremendous difference in the swing of momentum. Sideline warning against Minnesota. Some exuberance on the Gopher bench. Obviously, that a big play. 43-yard running play is the longest uh, running play from scrimmage the Gophers have had this season. Now the wishbone look in the backfield. They mark it at the 15-yard line of Michigan. Minnesota is trailing by four. Gerald Moore, a tight end, is split out top the middle with Smith inside the 10 to about the nine yard line on a gain of six Evans made the stop can't e emphasize enough the work up front on that Minnesota offensive line and running down situations has been exemplary they are running the football well and it's really amazing this is what they've done in the past years but if you look at this statistic Minnesota has 417 carries for 1252 yards John Vaughn alone for Minnesota has rushed for 1,208 yards. Second down. Heath, make that Rios. Chuck Rios, not a whole lot there. Milligan and Marshall filled well for Michigan. He got maybe a yard. Now it is third down for Minnesota. Way we saw the graphic earlier how well Minnesota has run the ball in the past couple of seasons with Daryl Thompson. Now they're starting to run the football well against a very large and very experienced Michigan defense. This is what they need to do to take some of the pressure off of Fleetwood. The better they run, the better he'll be. Double tights, quick count. Rios stuffed back, but he has a first and goal just inside the five. Man, he was really popped for when Brown came in along with Eric Anderson. Brown from the secondary, a cornerback. Anderson of the linebacking core. First and goal for the Gophers. 4.45 to go in this first half of play. A big 43-yard run by Mark Smith following a fumble recovery by Frank Jackson has set Minnesota up on the door, looking for their first touchdown of the game. It was Brian Townsend who pierced through into the offensive backfield to slow him down. Milligan and Welburn put him away. Watch Welburn, the All-American safety, come up and fill. Boom! Let me tell you, folks, this guy plays well on Saturdays. His career is not done after this season. You're going to see this fellow playing a lot of football on Sunday somewhere. He will probably be a free safety because of his size and his speed. But right now, he's playing some tough, strong safety for Michigan. Second and goal to go for the Gophers at the Michigan 5. King in motion. Late one on the option. Touchdown! Markel Fleetwood on a five-yard touchdown run. His fifth touchdown rushing this season. This type of play.
play right here is what worries defensive coordinators because you can drop the defense, you can be in the right spot at the right time, and Fleetwood can still hurt you like he did right there. Brett Berglund for the point after. Dean Kaufman on the hole. And the Golden Gophers with 3.39 to go. First half of play have recaptured the lead by three over the homestanding Wolverines. Wayne Larvey, Ben Bennett. Here's how Minnesota caught and passed Michigan. You can be in the right spot at the right time, but you have to make the play. All-American Trip Wellborn right there, but he's got to honor the pitch, yeah. man. He can't come back in in time to stop Markel Fleetwood from getting the ball into the end zone. Big play for Minnesota. Brett Berglund's kick as you see the scoring drive. Desmond Howard trying to spin away. Covered up short of the 30-yard line. So it is a first down for the Michigan Wolverines. They have the football just short of their 30. Trailing now by the score of 10 to 7. And Elvis Gerbach heads back on. Second all-time Michigan career passing percentage leader at about 59.9%. Second to Jim Harbaugh. Alexander in motion. Ricky Powers. Not a bad read. They had it stacked up to the short side of the field pretty well, and he cut in behind his blockers to gain about four yards. Andre Davis, John, Mike Sunvolt came up on the stop. Wayne, one of the interesting things that Michigan is doing is they're running the no-huddle offense, but they're substituting players and they're calling plays at the line. Normally you run the no-huddle to keep the defense, the personnel that you want on the field, to keep them on the field. Michigan's not really doing that. That's a first down near the 42-yard line. Ricky Powers on the carry. Les O'Hara made the stop. Gain of nine. Frank Jackson was also there. Minnesota scored first. There's a look at Powers' work. Minnesota led 3-0. Michigan scored late in the first period of play to take a 7-3 lead on a touchdown drive. Minnesota came back off a turnover to drive in for a score. Gerbach. Desmond Howard, Grenon Mays on the stop. They're going to mark it here, the 46 first down Wolverines and go for territory. Let's head back to the studio at Tim Brando. Wayne, a couple of shutouts being thrown. First to the Ivy League, the Eli's up 17 to nothing in the 107th meeting between these two, dating back to 1875. And Georgia Tech, Bobby Rose's club keeping uh, the role alive, beating Wake Forest 21 to nothing. Tech going for their first title since the SEC crown in 52. Ricky Powers, another first down for the freshman. Joel Stats makes the stop. You've got John Vaughn, when he's healthy, leads the nation in rushing. And now you've got Ricky Powers coming up. You're going to need more than one football for these two guys. I'll tell you what, these guys flat run the football. But again, as good as they are at running back, credit the offensive line. Dingman, the All-American, Doring, Elliott, Kokozo, and Skrepinek. These guys are open in the holes for the run through. 14 yards on the previous play from the 32 of Minnesota. Michigan trying to take charge. Powers again. Out of the 25 yard line, gain of about seven. Stats and Sunbolt made the stop. Michigan very young at the skill position. All freshmen and sophomores, but that veteran offensive line, watch them work. You want to see what Michigan football is all about? Look at the size of the holes that these guys are opening up. And let me tell you something about Dingman. You just saw him there at the end of your picture. This is a guy that takes great pride in opening those holes. Jared Bunch running hard. Will not go down until he has a first down inside the Minnesota 20 near the 19. Jackson and Isaacson make the stop. And there is Dean Dingman, what named a, yesterday first team Kodak All-American. And what a great story this guy is. You don't think this guy wants to be the best that he could be? What does he do after a long, hard game? He goes into the weight room and does squats. Wow. Dedication. 
First down from it, the 19. It's going to pay off for him, too. Gerbach, quick toss, dropped by Derek Alexander in the flat underneath the coverage of Drenon May. Minute 12 to go in this first half of play. Minnesota leading by three. I'll tell you something. Uh, these young receivers, Alexander and Howard, both sophomore receivers, they've made some mistakes over the course of this season before they have tremendous potential and now great experience for the future. And when they make a mistake, boy, they make up for it in a big way, whether it's kickoff returns or receptions, reverses. Gophers strung it out well. Out in front of the plate, Joel Stats, Sean Lumpkin filled from his secondary spot. A couple of players tangled up, and I believe Michigan's going to want to stop the clock with one minute straight up to go. First half of play. Wolverines talk it over. They trail by three. Hello. Hello, Jamie. How are you? How you doing, buddy? How'd you like the new music? Mm. Great. Really great. Well, where are the words? How about checking your fax machine? You're gonna love it. It's in your favorite key. Hey. This feeling is just like magic. Day by day. Dex facsimile, one of a wide range of business communication solutions from Fujitsu, the global computer and communications company. Barbecue. Sure, but summer's over. Bag it. McDonald's? Hey, the grill. All right. You know, I sure could go for some... Yeah, fries and a Coke with that. A McRib pack. I'll take it. Hey, let's see. Oops, better do it now, huh? Mmm, McRib. McDonald's! A food, folks, and fun. Chomp. A little brains, a little luck, and a lot of late nights. A good family, a good spot, and some good advice. That's the way it's supposed to be. The USF&G is standing behind me. That's the way it's supposed to be. And USF&G is standing behind me. Wayne Larvey, Ben Bennett, we are in Ann Arbor, Michigan, the big house, Michigan Stadium. Minnesota at the moment leading by three. The Wolverines facing a third down at about nine yards to go. Inside the Minnesota 20. Forces J.D. Carlson into a field goal situation. Gerbach barely has time to set before Davis gets on. You can see his feet never get set. Comes in and smothers him. This will be a 42-yard field goal attempt by J.D. Carlson. He is 2 of 5 from this range this season. Out of the hole of Kent Solon. Steve Everett on the snap. No good. He pulled it to the near side. 12 seconds left to go in this first half of play, and Minnesota has withstood a furious Michigan rush on that drive. The Wolverines up front were literally blowing the Gophers off the line. And how big will that sack be later on in the game? Michigan, only down three, has a chance to go in, pick up a first down and go in for the score before the half. Davis comes up with the big sack. You never know which play is going to be the turning point in the game. But every season, coaches will go back and say, you know, this one play was the big play in that game. This one play was a big, big play in that game. And you never know what play that's going to be, so that's why you hear coaches always telling you, hustle on every play like it's your last. Minnesota, 12 seconds left to go, first half. Smith is going to kill the clock with about a seven-yard gain out across the 30-yard line. As time winds down, 
in this first half. They head to the locker room. The Gophers have to be happy where they're at right now. We're born in California. This is downright cold for you. <laughs> and it's about 40-some degrees. I'm looking for where they're hanging the meat right now, boy. <laughs> Woo! Michigan will receive. There is Brett Berglund, kicker number three for Minnesota. Number 21, Desmond Howard. Derek Alexander, number one on the right side of your screen back deep. Both are dangerous. Howard averaging 33 yards. Alexander, 27 yards per return. Berglund has tried to put a lot of height into his kicks today, going for a shorter kick, but a high kick to minimize the return. Hooks it toward the far side and sails out of bounds. So they'll back him up five yards, make him do it over again. Take a look at Michigan's first half of play. Off a Minnesota turnover and interception, Michigan drove to its only TD. And they had an opportunity on a field goal try late in the first half of play, but came away empty as that kick was pulled toward the far side by or a tour toward our near side by J.D. Carlson. Otherwise, Minnesota has pretty much contained the Michigan offense. Well, the key stat that you mentioned, Wayne, was time of possession. Minnesota wanted to keep their offense on the field and Michigan's offense off the field. To this point, they've done that effectively. How well they do that in the second half will be the key to who comes out on top of this game. Last week, Michigan played with great emotion in the second half against Illinois. This is an emotional day for the Michigan football program. It's Seniors Day, their final home game in Michigan Stadium. We'll see how they come out of the second half. Howard. Good cutback. Desmond Howard out across the 45 of Michigan to the Wolverine 47. Brett Foggy and Derek Fisher on the tackle. Wayne, you saw two things on that kick. One, you saw why Minnesota's been kicking the ball high because they wanted to keep it out of this man's hands. But the second thing you saw is why he's first nationally at kickoff returns, averaging 33 yards a return. This guy can wiggle for some yards. Elvis Gerbach, three of nine, 34 yards passing at a touchdown of the first half of play. First and 10. Ricky Powers off the play action, and Gerbach comes up, fires. Play action to Powers, and Gerbach hit his man at Desmond Howard on the far side of the 45-yard line, gain of about nine. Mays and Heath were there defensively. When you've got speed like Desmond Howard, you have to honor him deep. The cushion is given to him. Now watch after he makes the catch. He's in the air and still slipping a tackle. Before he even got to the ground, he was trying to get away from somebody. On second down, here's Powers. Boy, good force by Fisher from the secondary. Derek Fisher, and they strung it out well in the linebacking core and along the defensive line. A loss of two. And the Wolverines now face a third down, and almost four yards to go. Derek Fisher at five foot nine, 182 pounds. If you're not going to be big, boy, you got to be brave. You saw him, his ability to put his nose on a ball carrier right there. He's made some big plays for Minnesota this year. Three receivers in the game. Alexander and Van Dyne to the top of your screen. Howard on the bottom. Third down, about three and a half. That's Van Dyne in motion. Ricky Powers, not nearly enough. Ben Williams and Joel Stats respond. <laughs> Did you see Ben Williams? And listen to little dance at the end of that deck. And listen to the Boo Birds. That's actually a very good call at midfield. Michigan runs the football as well as anybody in the country. Powers has been running the football extremely well today. That's not a bad call. It just didn't come up in their favor. Eddie Oscona has worked today. John Lumpkin is back deep in single safety to receive this punt. Miles Kona gets it to turn over. Wolverines have it covered. And the Gophers are going to start inside their 15-yard line at about the 12. Let's get out of the sidelines. And 
and our sideline reporter, Brad Lefton. Brad? 100,000 people here. You think this isn't a romantic atmosphere? Let me let you in on a secret. You see, in section 39, there's a Dr. David Farlow with his girlfriend, possibly soon to be fiance, Laura. You see, he's going to have a banner fly overhead sometime in the third quarter with his wedding proposal to her. Now, he's paid 175 bucks to Gary's banner service to fly this thing, and they told him they've never had a refusal. Well, I'll keep my eye on it. Wayne and Ben, I'll let you uh, handle the football. <laughs> He's a doctor? Chuck Woolery down there on the sideline. It's a love connection. She'll say yes. Smith covered up in the middle of the Michigan defense. No gain. Mike Evans, the junior from Roxbury, Massachusetts, made the tackle on the play, leads the Big Ten and tackles for losses. That, well, technically, maybe a loss of a half yard. Mark it down as a tackle for loss. Loss of one, second and 11. Wait, I hear it played. <laughs> Second and 11 now for Minnesota. Markel Fleetwood. Smith trying to break through, and Anderson made the tackle. Gain of a, about four yards out to about the 15-yard line. First half possessions, Minnesota drove 63 yards to a field goal. Then the interception, which set up Michigan's touchdown. A couple of stall drives, actually a few stall drives, until Minnesota went 43 yards following a Michigan turnover to its only touchdown of the first half. And coaches will tell you, turnovers are what hurts you the most in any football game. Each team has capitalized on the other's turnover so far. Third down and seven. Not nearly enough for the first down. David Key stayed home and made the play. We'll take this opportunity to correct ourselves on Fred Foggy. We said he was the brother of former Minnesota quarterback Ricky Foggy, the all-time offense leader for the Gophers. He is the cousin, not the brother, of Ricky Foggy, but he has a lot of Ricky Foggy's athletic ability. Does. Welburn back deep at single safety. Dean Kaufman in punt formation. Welburn at the midfield marker, and Michigan's going to get great field position. Down the sidelines. Boy, when that happens, it's almost like a turnover. The Wolverines will start at the Gopher 20. They trail by three with 10.57 to go in the third. In financial matters, as in life, everybody's different. Different needs. College football, Minnesota and Michigan, is brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealers. Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. And by Amtrak, with over 500 destinations nationwide for you to choose from. Larrabee, Ben Bennett, better than 100,000 on hand at Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor. 10.57 left to go. Third period of play, that's our story. Michigan has it now, first down. Off a punt return by Trip Welburn at the 20-yard line of Minnesota. Garrett Bunch, the fullback, is stacked up in the middle of the line. You know, the toughest play to run, it appears to me, after watching Michigan State all these years and now watching Minnesota today, is that fullback dive up the middle against the stunt 4-3. Here's the end of the punt return. Trip Welburn taken out of bounds and may have suffered a leg injury here. This is a big play for Michigan for more than one reason. It was a great punt return to put him in good field position, but I think they would rather give up the field position and have Trip Welburn back in the football game. Second down at about 10. Sean Lumpkin made the stop. Lumpkin, third leading a tackler, 74 tackles this season. There's Trip Welburn, the All-American, working on his left leg. It looked like right before he got hit, when he planted on the turf, it looked like his knee might have given just a little bit. Right knee, excuse me, make it your right leg, yes. Right leg on Trip Welburn. Now we've got a third down for Michigan and about seven yards to go at the 17 of Minnesota. 
Air box. Lots of time. Desmond Howard very close to the first down of the 11-yard line of Minnesota. Andre Davis right there on the coverage in the tackle. Yeah, they spot it down. Maybe close enough for a measurement or not? Nope, they're going to motion first down, I believe. Bring it, bring it yeah, they're the bringing sticks. the change. You're right. They're going to bring the sticks out. All right, wait. finger pointing going on. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say they missed it by three inches. You have a uh, a window of uh, one inch on either side of that. They got it by the length of the football. See what I told you? Three inches. <laughs> Why I'm a highly highly paid professional, boy. <laughs> As you always say, don't try these things at home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm good, aren't I? Well, I tell you what. All right, the football just outside the 10-yard line. Yes, Michigan could pick up a first down without scoring a touchdown. But that would almost be hard to do. They'd be only a, an inch or two away from the end zone if they do that. I, I'll say they'd be three inches away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> first 10 and 10 for Michigan. Renon Mays got a piece of it. That is a real tough pass to defend against, Ben. It's a very tough pass to defend against, and it's even harder to throw if you don't throw it right on time. Gerbach has become very focused on Desmond Howard. He's the guy that he's looking for on every single play. Now, Howard had one-on-one -on -one coverage, but Gerbach got back on his third step and stared him down and allowed coverage to break up on the football and move out towards Howard. Second and ten for Gerbach. Timeout. He was running out of time on the play clock. 9.08 left to go. Third period of play. Minnesota still leads by three. Intra We're at Michigan Stadium. Wayne Larravee, Ben Bennett. That scoreboard tells you all you need to know at the moment. Michigan on offense. Second down at 10 yards to go. The Gopher, 10 and a half yard line. Gerbach screens it out. Jared Bunch, touchdown! mentioned how focused Elvis Gerbach had become on Desmond Howard. Minnesota's defense realized that, felt the same way, and had rotated their defense into double coverage on Howard, which left Bunch wide open. So the Wolverines assume a four-point lead over John Gutekunst and the Minnesota Golden Gophers. 9.03 left to go in the third. Gerbach all day has been going to Desmond Howard, who's at the right-hand side of your screen, but Bunch sneaks out to the left, and you can see there's nobody there to cover him. Once he gets down close, folks, he's going to get the ball on his own. Weak side corner blitz from Fisher. You see Fisher was responsible for Bunch. He ran right by him on the stunt. Bunch caught the football, ran into the end zone. Jared Bunch coming off his biggest day of the season against Illinois, rushing the football for 77 yards on 13 carries. He scores the second uh, Michigan touchdown here this afternoon. Here's Trip Welburn. He was injured on a punt return that set up that drive. And we are told will not return to the ball game, obviously. And there is Jared Bunch. J.D. Carlson set to restart the game. Michigan on Seniors Day at Michigan Stadium. Leading by four. Carlson, good leverage into this kick. Foggy coming up under it. Foggy escapes to the outside. Minnesota will start just short of its 35-yard line. Carlson, the kicker, ran about a bounds. 
You want to talk about what a great athlete Fred Foggy is. You see what a type of player he is on offense, and you see him returning kicks. It's unbelievable. This guy played defensive back last year and actually led the Big Ten in interceptions with five. And five interceptions as a DB last year. Jared Bunch camping that uh, short 20-yard drive. Five plays. That's the other scoring drive by Michigan Ben was just 26 yards in four plays, happening in the first half of play. First quarter. First down now for the Gophers, Fleetwood. Goes down back at the 31-yard line, loss of about four yards. Mike Evans and Martin Davis make the stop. Welburn heads off. Folks, that is a big loss to a secondary that's very experienced with Trip Wellborn is in there. He's got four guys back there that have been playing together for 34 consecutive starts. When they lose him, boy, they lose the heart and soul of their secondary. David Ritter replaces Trip Welburn in the secondary. Ritter's blocked a couple of punts that have been returned for touchdowns. Second down, about 13 yards to go. This is Smith, and he is nailed by Anderson, the linebacker. Look at the emotion by the Wolverines. Now, this is something, one of the criticisms earlier this season is that Michigan wasn't playing the game with a great deal of intensity and emotion. Last week against Illinois, they played with intensity and tremendous emotion. And today, we've seen them on occasion play with emotion on defense. You could even see in the first half they weren't playing with emotion. Gary Moeller has said something to these boys at halftime that are getting them fired up about playing football again, and it's working to Michigan's benefit. Third down, about 12 yards to go, gain of two of the previous play. Minnesota, 50% on third down. They lead the Big Ten in that statistic. Fleetwood, penalty marker is down in the offensive backfield. Fleetwood goes down short of the first down. Chris Bone made the stop. Might be for holding against Minnesota. Holding the call against the Gophers will be turned down by the Wolverines. It would force a Minnesota punt. John Gutekunst on the sideline. Fourth down for the Golden Gophers. Coach Gutekunst pacing anxiously now. His team led by three at halftime. They trail by four. Desmond Howard back deep in place of Trip Welburn, the injured Trip Welburn. Dean Kaufman. Fourth down and about seven yards to go. Fair catch signal made, and the catch completed near the 27-yard line by Desmond Howard. First down, Michigan from there. Let's get down to the sidelines of Brad. Desmond Howard is returning the punts because Trip Wellborn has been taken off the field. We have the word from the team doctor, Dr. O'Connor. Wellborn has a sprained right knee, and there's a ligament damage in that knee. He's been taken off the field. His return, he probably will not return. That's the official word, Wayne and Ben. All right, thank you very much, Brad. Trip Walmart from Greensboro, North Carolina, the birthplace of somebody we all know and love. Do you want to add that? <laughs> Who that somebody we all know and love is? Uh, all right, I take it back. It's somebody we all know it is. Again, do you want to add who that somebody is? <laughs> that was me, somebody. That's where I was, I was born in Greensboro, North Carolina. Big deal, huh? So I tell you all that. <laughs> First down. 27-yard line. Gerbach. Powers wide open on the sideline. Gain of nine yards to the 36. Fisher forced him out. Heath had a shot at him back inside the 35. Couldn't wrap him up. Minnesota's defense has become overly conscious of Desmond Howard because Elvis Gerbach has gone to him the majority of the game. That time, Gerbach again wanted to go to him. Minnesota's defense sagged back, and he was open to hit Powers underneath. Second down, about a yard to go. There is Desmond Howard. The lone wide receiver in the lineup right now for Michigan. Ricky Powers. And 
the freshman has a first down out near the 40-yard line. Michigan leading by four, about 6.51 left to go in this third period. Sunbold and Heath on the tackle to Powers. Derek Fisher also there. And a lot of people out there are probably wondering, why are we not seeing John Vaughn? This is a guy that rushed for 200 yards against Notre Dame. It's since the Michigan State game, when he injured his ankle, he has just not been 100%. They don't want to run him to death and possibly hurt him more. And in addition to that, Powers is running the football very well. Gerbach in trouble. Looked in on the blitz. Makes the sack back near the 30. They mark it at the 29-yard line. That's a loss of 11. Big play by John Lumpkin. Boy, when you ask John Gutekunst, the head coach of Minnesota, about this young man, he speaks in glowing terms. Lumpkin has really come on in the last three weeks. He said, I don't doubt there's a better safety in the game right now in the Big Ten than John Lumpkin in the last three weeks. He's been outstanding. John Lumpkin has played some good football. 74 tackles, four interceptions, and he just came up with his second quarterback sack. Big Ten player of the week two weeks ago. Second down now, 21 for Michigan. Derek Alexander in motion. Davis arrives on the scene. Gain of maybe a yard out near the 30. Folks, let me tell you something about an offensive lineman that's on a mission. Dean Dingman is just named to the Kodak All-American team. He drove his man, Gary Isaacson, 12 yards off the football. Mandarich used to do that. They'd call it, what, a uh, pancake or something? Made popular by Bill Fralick. Yeah, whatever term it's called. Yeah, exactly. It's not, it's not a lot of fun if you're on the receiving end. Third down. Intercepted by Jackson. Jackson had some running room. Inside the 35 of Michigan. Yale Van Dyne, a wide receiver, made the tackle at first down for the Golden Gophers at the Michigan 33. Watch Gerbach back to pass. You'll see what he sees. He's looking down the field. He lets the ball go. He's got a linebacker in front, and he just throws the ball entirely too high. Howard's good, but he can't get up that high. Jackson steps in front for his fourth interception and runs the ball back. Minnesota's got great field position, and you wonder if the momentum has switched to their favor. Fleetwood nearly intercepted and in fact intercepted on the play by Lance Dutton. Penalty marker is down. There is a penalty marker down. Illegal motion against Minnesota. Penalty decline. Michigan football. Best field position to start a drive for Minnesota at the Michigan 33, and here's what happens. And how quickly it can happen. You see the pass here thrown behind. He gets his hands on it. The ball pops up. Number 22, Lance Dotton with his fourth interception of the season, and this is as big, a one, as big an interception as he's come up with so far this year. Pass thrown behind King, and then I'll tell you something, uh, Martin Davis helps him hang on. He gets, he gets the assist, yeah. First down for Michigan, near the Wolverine, 31. Michigan leading by four, late stages of the third period. Ricky Powers. My goodness, couple of good dance moves there. Out to the 39. Joel Stats made the stop. They mark it just short of the 40. Put a move on Derek Fisher to pick up an extra five yards. Give him a gain of nine as they mark it near the 40. Gary Moeller, offensive coordinator as well as head football coach here at Michigan. Second down, short yardage. Second and one. Gerbach play action. Dave Diebold, first down to the 45-yard line. Sean Lumpkin forced him out. He wanted to go deep, he but wanted, Howard fell down. He wanted to 
throw the football to Desmond Howard. Desmond Howard maybe didn't get the call or just had a mental breakdown because he was downfield trying to throw a block. You saw Gerback shuffle in the pocket because he was looking for Howard. Howard was throwing a block. He's not going to catch a ball like that. Derek Alexander, the long wide receiver to the bottom of your screen. First down, Michigan. Hesitation move at the line of scrimmage at the 45, and then he shot through a tight hole across the 50 to the 49-yard line. Lumpkin and Jackson on the stop. Boy, that little change of pace move can sometimes open up a sliver of a hole, and that's all Ricky Powers needs. Well, that little stutter step allows guys like Dean Dingman, Matt Elliott, and Greg Skrepinek at 322 pounds to knock somebody out of the way for him. Gerbach looking at second and four. Ricky Powers again. First down and more inside the 40 near the 38-yard line. Joel Sass in on the stop for the Golden Gophers with help from Lumpkin and Jackson. Watch the guys up front. Watch the right side of your line. Look at these guys just knocking Minnesota completely off the football. Ricky Powers is a good running back, but there's a lot of people that be good running backs behind this line. Well, that's a point that uh, Coach Muller made with us, Ben, and with all the young people they're playing at the skill positions, that offensive line, a veteran big offensive line, has allowed those young people to grow with some success early in their career. First down, Gerbach, play action. Desmond Howard appears to have a first down inside the Minnesota 30. Fisher forced him out. First down, Wolverine. Desmond Howard completely turned around Derek Fisher. He had Fisher thinking he was going deep. He hit the brakes and came back. Gerbach delivered the ball right on the money. They set the chains at the 26-yard line of Minnesota. Michigan on the drive. Off an interception. Jared Bunch. His yards are not pretty, but he gets about four in the heavy traffic, maybe three. Mertz and Lumpkin team up on the stop. Gary Isaacson is down on the play. I'll tell you what, you bump heads with that Michigan offensive line after a while, you feel it. Isaacson shake it up, needs some help. We have a break of the action with 2.20 left to go. Third period of play. We'll be back. Oh, my neck. Oh, my neck. What can I do for my neck? What's that? It's a personal upgrade from Leander. Now there is a solution to neck pain caused by sleeping in your easy chair or while traveling. The personal upgrade provides support in the critical areas of the neck and head as shown on these x-rays. By keeping your neck straight and your head supported, tension is released from the upper spine and you can relax, maybe even catch a few winks. Boy, this is great. You're right. No more neck or back pain. Traveling is finally fun again. The personal upgrade is made from soft, washable, high-quality fabric with special foam cushions for the ultimate in comfort. Now, with your personal upgrade, rest comfortably in first class everywhere. A great gift for the holidays. Call 1-800-356-8100. That's 1-800-356-8100. Your credit card will be billed. $14.95 plus $2 shipping. Call for your personal upgrade now. Mike Singletary hits hard, but not like the hard-hitting football news on ESPN's Emmy Award-winning NFL Game Day. The team of Berman, Axtown, Jackson, Edelstein, and Dyson hit the air each Sunday. Jerry Rice can cover the field, but not like the football coverage on ESPN's hour-long NFL Game Day. We'll take you all around the NFL and inside the numbers. NFL Game Day, Sunday at the special time of 11.30 Eastern, only on ESPN. The very end of this play, Isaacson has his hand caught in between Gerard Bunch's arm and someone else's helmet, or in between his leg and his helmet. And you can see him grab his forearm right away. Folks, that hurts. 
Mike Sunbolt, number 79, digs in on the nose of the defense for the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. They trail by four, late third period of play, Michigan on the attack for the second down. Desmond Howard, surrounded by a posse of Gophers, but nonetheless picked up a first down near the 14-yard line of Minnesota. Drenone May, Sean Lumpkin, team up on the stop. Minnesota's defense feeling like they have to take a chance. They're bringing eight and nine people up on the line, giving single coverage to Desmond Howard, hoping they can get to Gerbach before he can get the ball to Howard. Then a lot of defenses will do that when you get in deep into their own their territory. They'll gamble some and try to force a big play to take it away from you. Now first down just inside the 14 for Michigan. Ricky Powers trying to cut it back, gets down to about the 10 before being stacked up. Gain of about four. Powers has provided good pro production in place of John Vaughn. Jackson and Stats made the stop. I don't think John Vaughn, who leads the Big Ten in rushing, has played since the first period of play in this ballgame. And five carries for, I believe, 22 yards. You have to wonder if that ankle's bothering him again yep. or if it's just Ricky Powers playing good football. And Ricky Powers, 92 yards, heading for his third 100-yard game of the season. Second down, Michigan, about six. for the first down stick inside the five. Sean Lumpkin forced him out of real estate on the far side, number 55, and White had a shot at him. Conspicuous in his absence is the name of Mike Sunbold. This is why. Look at how far down the line Matt Elliott and Ding Demon drove that, that gentleman right there. And this is a good football player, folks. This is not just your average lineman. Mike Sunvold, although he's playing with a broken hand, is one of the best defensive linemen in the Big Ten. First down, Michigan. First and goal to go. The Gopher three. Gerbach. For Alexander. Touchdown. First catch of the day, a three-yard touchdown reception. Derek Alexander, third touchdown pass of the game for Gerbach. Elvis Gerbach, known for having a strong arm, but he showed some amazing finesse today. Look at him lob the ball out there where only Alexander can get to it right before he steps out of bounds. Great throw and catch. You can't draw him up any better than that. Same type of play they hit Desmond Howard on in the first half. J.D. Carlson for the point after. Rarely does he miss. And he adds the extra point to give Michigan its largest lead of the afternoon. 11 points over Minnesota with 21 seconds to go in the third. And 66 consecutive PAT conversions by Carlson. One short of Mike Gillette to put him into second place. Let's take another look at that touchdown. The inside receiver does a juke step. Howard breaks across the middle. Alexander breaks to the outside. Gerbach lobs it up. Jackson's beat. Alexander makes the grab. That's some good football right there. Takes a nice touch on the part of the quarterback to put that in there. It really does, and it takes a lot of practice between a quarterback and a wide receiver to get that kind of timing because each receiver is different in the way he runs routes. Some receivers get to spots much faster than others, and some people get there in different ways. You just have to know when and where they're going to be. Gerbach seems to be on with both of them today. The only skill position starter Michigan will lose on offense this year is Jared Bunch, the fullback. Carlson's kickoff carries toward the near side. Unfortunately, it's coming back, Wayne. Yep. Penalty marker down. Penalty marker down, and it may pull it back. 
Scoring drive, well, 69 yards, their longest scoring drive of the afternoon by far. Ten plays, Derek Alexander, his first catch of the day, made it count. Storyline thus far in this football game on a crisp, cool afternoon in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Smith, 70 yards, 42 of which came on one run to set up a Minnesota touchdown. Gerbach now three TD passes. Vaughn, cameo appearance of the first period of play. Howard's been the go-to man for Michigan. 13 seconds to go in the third. Illegal use of hands, the penalty against Minnesota on the kickoff return, and the Gophers are pinned back inside their 15. At the 13-yard first down, Scott Schaffner on a quarterback in place of Martel Fleetwood. Quick dive up the middle for short yardage out across the 15 to about the 16-yard line, and the third period comes to a close. End of three complete. The Wolverines now own an 11-point lead over the Gophers. Earlier today, Brad Lepton, our sideline reporter, told us there would be a proposal in the air. Lori, will you marry me? Dave. Dave is a dentist. And now we're waiting for Lori's answer. Think, we, think she'll trail it behind the plate? <laughs> hey, Larrabee and Ben Bennett. Michigan Stadium, Schaffner on the roll on second down, going to keep it himself, and takes a hit from Eric Anderson, leading tackler for the Michigan Wolverines, and they are really fired up now. Michigan leading by 11 at home. Michigan is back to playing Michigan football. This is what they. This is the type of football they played under Bo. This is the type of football that Gary Moeller wants them to play. You've got to play tough defense. You've got to be emotional, and you've got to run the football effectively. Third down, about six from the 17. Schaffner. Shot is intended receiver Pat Tinglehoff. Brown and Key on the coverage. Tinglehoff's dad played for the Minnesota Vikings for many years. 17 to be exact. Along the uh, what offensive line, right? Wasn't he center? Said? Yep. And, and a good and one. One of the most admired linemen in the game. Back in punt formation. Dean Kaufman. Desmond Howard drops back deep in single safety. Trip Welburn went out with a knee injury earlier in this ball game. Here's Desmond Howard. Nice punt. Here comes Howard. Oh! Whoa. What a job just to keep his balance inside the 45 to the 43 yard line of Minnesota. Frank Jackson finally brought him down. They call him magic, and you're about to see why. Watch at full speed. Look at him put his hand down and manage to keep his balance. And then, whoop, just a little bit, he was gone. This guy is a player right here, folks. Who's your Heisman candidate? Well, the Notre Dame vote is in. No question about that. All those candidates are excellent candidates. Call 1-900-786-2255-95 cents per call and register your vote for Heisman Trophy. Michigan out of first down. Jared Bunch playing his final game here at Michigan Stadium inside the 40 to the 39. Back to the studio and Tim Brando. Major happenings that could scar the Sugar Bowl, gentlemen. Scott Zolak will find Marcus Badgett for the turf. 72 yards to set up a Mark Mason TD run, his second of the day. Maryland may be saving Joe Krivak's job, leading 35-28, under five to play. UVA has the ball beyond their own 40-yard line. We'll keep you in touch. Second down for Michigan, about seven. Gerbach into the flat. Derek Alexander! Stepped out of the 28-yard line. Ken Seabreeze chased him out of the far side. 12 yards on the game. Watch the block out front by Desmond Howard. It's not a devastating block, but it's just enough to spring Alexander. Then after that, it's all athletic ability, although he steps out of bounds. 
first down. 28 yard line of Minnesota. broke through on the safety blitz as you've been mentioning Tom Gadd the defensive coordinator at Minnesota has been uh, taking more risks in this second half of play as Michigan moves deeper into Minnesota territory with an assortment of blitzes well what happens when you play your base defense you hope that you can stop Michigan running the football if you can't do it with your base defense you've got to try something else in this case they've gone to the blitz Sometimes it's been effective. On the touchdown pass to Jared Bunch, it was not. Second and 10 for Michigan. Almost two minutes gone by, fourth period of play. Michigan leading by 11, looking to add more. Yale Van Dyne, number 34 in motion. Desmond Howard. Plus yardage down the sidelines to the 14 of Minnesota. Another first down. See Brian Heath chased him out. Exactly the same play we just saw a little while ago to Alexander. This time it's to Howard. Watch the block out front by Van Dyne. Again, not a devastating block, but enough to let Howard slip by and pick up big yardage. Ben, that block doesn't have to be devastating when you've got the kind of quickness that Desmond Howard is running behind it with. Absolutely. First down near the 14 of Minnesota. Powers, but on setback. Van Dyne and Alexander at the bottom of your screen. And Ricky Powers <laughs> kept his balance for an extra three yards down near the five yard line. Pickup of nine. Carlin Burke, Skeeter Ockrey on the stop. When you're a defensive back, you're told to get underneath the pads. You can see right here, watch the hit. Boom, Jackson is plenty low, but look at the balance of Ricky Powers. Folks, that's something you can't coach. That's natural, instinctive running. Hey, Ricky Powers was in high school a year ago. 109 yards now for Ricky Powers. Second week in a row, he's over 100. to finish it off. Touchdown! <laughs> Folks, this offensive line is flat cleaning some people's blocks. Look at Ricky Powers here. Sees everybody knocked to the outside. Makes a good cutback. Lowers his head and says, hey, it's just another day at the office. I tell you, Matt Elliott swinging over there, sliding over on a block, took a couple of guys with him as well. J.D. Carlson, as we showed you earlier, is at 66 in a row. PATs going for 67. He's coming up on the Michigan record. Out of the hole of Ken Salem. Everett with the snap, and the kick is good. Michigan Wolverines trailing 10 to 7 at halftime have roared in front big time. ESPN's College Football Minnesota and Michigan is brought to you by Jaguar, a blending of art and machine. And by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. Michigan with 21 second half points has stormed in front 28 to 10. John Vaughn on the right number 25 Ricky Powers on the left number 12. Vaughn a sophomore Powers a true freshman. Michigan well stocked with running backs for the present and future. Carlson's kick carrying toward the far side. This is foggy. Hands it off on a reverse. Douglas gets to the 12. Dazzle, trying to take a chance, make a big play happen. Let's get out of Brad on the sideline. Hey, I promised you guys earlier that we were going to follow this wedding story. Here's Lori Northrup. She's just been proposed to by Dave Farlow with an airplane banner that flew over the stadium in the third quarter. And now we find out the answer, Lori. 
Will you marry me? Yes, I will. <laughs> What creativity! Now, is, is this is this is this the end? Is this the end of your scheme? No, no. I worked real hard last night trying to get a ring made for her, and we got it done in time. I'm sweating it, but we've made it. Okay, back up to Wayne and Ben. Shatner. It's his big tight end Evans. Got a first down out across the 30-yard line. Dotton and Anderson team up on the stop. Well, I wonder what the diamond looks like. <laughs> You know, you got to like seeing something like that. Because you, you know this guy has put hours and hours of time and effort. But the biggest thing, he's put in thought. You know, and somebody that's getting asked to be married has got to appreciate that. Look at that with Bo on the T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's my kind of guy. Love is true blue, no less. I wonder if Bo will be in the wedding. Schaffner. Pass off the mark. Ball seemed like a stick stuck to his hand. Pass on the throw. Let's go back to the studio for an update. Tim Brando. Tim. Thank you, Wayne. We'll update the Big Ten now. Ohio State leading Wisconsin 7-3, and the Hall of Fame Bowl can't be too pleased. Illinois and Indiana right now are 10-10 and -10 in the third quarter. Michigan State leading Northwestern in the second quarter by a score of 7-6. to six. And by the way, guys, for my money, no way Laura says no uh, to that proposal. I mean, not on national television. <laughs> Plus, he's a doctor. I mean, you know. But could you imagine if it was? <laughs> well, yeah. He just paid for a banner to fly over the stadium. Schaffner on the roll. Nice throw to the sideline. Over to make the catch. Keswick Joiner, former quarterback. Lance Dotton had the coverage. Let's see if we can pick it up here. Was he in play? You make the call, folks. Mm. Not by that. What do you think? Uh, I'll give it to them. They, they make so many good calls. We'll, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Gain of nine, third down. Third and one. Tough yards to a first down. A fullback, James King, or I should say Rios, following the block of King. Davis and Evans on the stop. John Gutekunst. His program has gone through some tough times since Lou Holtz left. But as we mentioned, he has restructured. He has a lot of young talent on the roster. This team will be much better next year. First and ten. Rio stormed back that time. Evans leading the way for Michigan. Mike Evans, this is good football right here. Plays off the block, puts his head on the football. Boom. Coaches love to see that because that's what you tell your players to do. Get your hands out, play off the block, put your head on the football, and be physical. He did all of the above. He gets an A for that effort. Second down. Chapter. Got his man inside the Michigan 40-yard line, and he's driven back on the play. Stephen Cambries, a tight end, made the catch. Ritter and Brown on the tackle for Michigan. They mark it near the 42. Pickup of seven. Total yardage in the first half for Minnesota, and look what Michigan has done. They slammed the door in the second half. And it, what goes along with that, as you see the clock at the top, is time of possession. In the first half, Minnesota had it 19 minutes. I promise you they haven't had it that much this half. Schaffner on a roll. Wide of the mark intended for Hopewell on the far side. Lance Dotton had the coverage. Schaffner has had receivers open this afternoon. Some of them he's hit, some of them he hasn't. Schaffner, as we mentioned, started the season, won the job at spring practice, started the opening game against Utah. Things did not go well. They brought in Fleetwood. He's been the starter ever since. But Fleetwood was shaken up earlier today on a number of occasions in the first half. Schaffner's quarterback much of the way here in the second half. Very difficult to get into a rhythm when you're playing in spots like that. Schaffner. Foggy. 
inside the 35 to the 34, and they're about two yards short of the first down. Dotton, again, the man they worked on on the far side. Shaft Shafter was a starting quarterback for Minnesota in his freshman and sophomore season. But that's when they had Daryl Thompson. All he needed to do was hand the football off the majority of the time. His stats from his freshman and sophomore year were almost identical, although not tremendous. They thought he was going to be the big gun coming into this year. Out of the wishbone on third and two. Antonio Carter for the first down of the 31-yard line in Michigan territory. Alex Marshall made the stop for the Wolverines. Now we've got a lot of football coming up for you this afternoon, including a game not too far from here, about three and a half hours away down in South Bend, Indiana. That'll be Notre Dame and Penn State coming up next. There's Markel Fleetwood on the sideline. The difference Fleetwood gives you an option and a real athlete on the flank of your offense if you put him there, whereas Shafter is more of your drop back style quarterback. Shafter runs the short passing game very, very well. He's a high percentage short ball thrower. The farther down the field he has to throw, the lower their percentage gets. So they'd like to keep the ball short. Unfortunately, they've got 10 minutes and running and they're 18 points down. Minnesota took a brief 3-0 lead. Michigan scored a touchdown. Michigan, uh, Minnesota scored right before halftime to lead at 10-7 at the break, but Michigan has dominated this second half. Shafter rolling. Being pressured by Hutchison. Delivers the ball on the money, and he's got a completion inside the 30, near the 27-yard line over the near side. Lance Dotton forced about gain of about five yards. Penn State and Notre Dame, as I mentioned a moment ago, and that'll be a great one. Penn State in the top 20. Irish lead the way overall. And then Auburn and Georgia. And the SEC are offering at 7.30 Eastern tonight in prime time. Would it, would it be safe to say that those two teams are going to fight like dogs and cats? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> You're so quick. Second down about four. Quarterback draw. Chapter got a first down. Inside the 15. You know, we talked with John Gutekunst last night and Jim Huber, the offensive coordinator, and we asked them point blank, when Shafter's in the lineup, do you change the offense? And they said, no, we run the same plays. And here is a case, that's a Markel Fleetwood play being run very well by Scott Shafter, a dropback quarterback. Absolutely. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Shafter is a very good athlete. He's got good speed, good size, 6'2", 200 pounds. He can do some good things for you. Cambrace in motion on first down. Shafter, pass wide of the mark intended for Hopewell, who was covered like a glove by Lance Dotton. And Lance Dotton got away with a sneaky <laughs> grab there, boy. See if we can pick it up in the field of marshmallows. Shafter on the roll, throws the ball. Dotton has unbelievable yep. coverage. <laughs> but what happened preceding to when he came into the picture, he had grabbed the wide receiver, Paul Hopewell, by the back of the jersey. Penalty marker down field, and of course that's going against Minnesota here as the Gophers back up. Illegal motion, offense decline. The illegal motions on Pat Tingle off. He came across and cut up the field before the snap was before the snap count was executed. But going back to Lance Dotton on that little grab, he'll tell you, hey, it wasn't a penalty. Why it wasn't a penalty? Because they didn't catch it. <laughs> we'll talk about the marshmallows in the end zone here in a few moments. The tradition here at Michigan. Shafter looking to the end zone, being pressured, hit as he throws, right through the hands of his intended receiver, Pat Tingle, off of the five-yard line, and Hafter really took a shot from Eric Anderson, the linebacker, blitzing through from the inside. This is a catch Tingle Hobbs should have had. His hands are cold because it's a cold afternoon, but folks, this is one you got to have. If you're a big play guy, you got to make this catch. The ball delivered high, but it went right through both hands. It was almost intercepted at the end. Almost by intercepted by Dotton, yeah. Now third down and 10. 
Good place for the quarterback draw. Kaffner. Keswick Joyner. Not much of a gain. Maybe two yard penalty marker down late in the play. David Key made the stop. I believe they may tack on some yardage for the face mask. Face mask, the preliminary indication against Michigan. Five yard face mask penalty. Eight fifty eight left to go. Number fifteen, Scott Schaffner. Woo, look at Florida. Texas plays some good football this season. Boys. Sure are, aren't they? Oops. Five yards, face mask. Oh boy. Half the distance, we'll repeat the down. So it's third down again. Third down, and the football now just outside the Michigan four. Third down at about three and a half yards to go. Foggy in motion. Gaffner. The tingle off for the touchdown. He drilled it right on the numbers. Tinglehoff screened out. Lance Dotton on the defense. Tinglehoff making up for the drop in the end zone. This is a pick play. The first guy is in the flat. The secondary receiver is the outside guy. Shafter waits patiently. Once the flat's not open, he waited for Tinglehoff to work his way free. Tinglehoff used a good move at the line to get away from the DB and then broke it across, made a good catch at the end. Two-point conversion try coming up for Minnesota. They trail 28 to 16. Eight minutes and 46 seconds left to go in the football game. The two-point conversion here puts them within a touchdown and a field goal of tying this football game. Shafter came on and ran a pretty good drive. Absolutely. Like I said, it's like, it's like anything else, Wayne. The more you do something, the better you get at it. And a quarterback's the same way. You've got to be able to get into a rhythm. You've got to be able to throw a few balls and take a few hits. It's very difficult to be shuffled in and out of the line, lineup and be effective. Two-point conversion try. Schaffner on the roll. Back against the grain. Score it! Evans went up and got it. He tipped it away from David Key. Minnesota making things interesting with 8.46 left to go in Ann Arbor. <laughs> touchdown pass to put Minnesota back in the game. You'll see Schaffner roll to his right, wait for Tinglehoff to shake free and deliver the ball low and right in the numbers. Tinglehoff wraps all around the football and secures the catch. Important play because it sets up the two-point conversion. A similar play to what they tried to run for the touchdown. Schaffner stops, throws back to his tight end. And folks, this is Akeem Olajuwon posting up Orlando Blackman. Pat Evans is six foot six inches. David Key is five foot 11 inches. Head position, made the catch look easy. Fred Berglund on the kickoff to restart the game. Desmond Howard makes the field near the 20. Howard tripped up at the 35-yard line, about a 15-yard return. Tinglehoff got a piece of him to make the uh, tackle. Scores a touchdown, makes a tackle on the kickoff. A scoring drive for Minnesota to get back into the game. Impressive 88-yard drive in 15 plays. Engineered by quarterback Scott Schaffner, Tinglehoff got the ball right in the gut for the four-yard touchdown pass. Now's the time that you have a gut check if you're on the Minnesota defense. You've got to step up and stop Michigan right now. Give your offense the ball back and put yourself back in a position to either tie up this game or win it. First and 10. Just short of the 35. Ricky Powers, the freshman, to the 40-yard line. Quick gain of about five yards. Back to the studio for an updated Tim. Impact day, impact game on many a bowl. Sean Moore leading his team in, trailing by seven. On fourth down, Lewis Johnson of Maryland catches him. 
They take a safety. Turp saved Joe Krivak's job, 35-30. Virginia likely to still go to the Sugar Bowl. Do you think the Big Ten has reason to be upset that they don't get their runner-up in the Sugar Bowl? We'll check to see if uh, changes are necessitated by Mickey Holmes and the Sugar Bowl committee as the day progresses, Wayne. Maybe some backroom politicking going on, right? Jared Bunch bounces to the outside for a first down and more into the clear. To the Gopher six. Sean Lumpkin saved the touchdown. On seniors day, the senior from Ashtabula, Ohio, makes the biggest run of the afternoon for Michigan. Look at the block out front by Desmond Howard, and look at Jared Bunch take advantage of it. Rumbling down the sideline, Sean Lumpkin makes the touchdown standing tackle. Jared Bunch at 6'2", 247 pounds, he was moving out. 54 yards. They mark it near the five at the six-yard line. First and goal. out of the line of scrimmage. Good play made by Ken Seabree, a junior from Detroit. And how many times do you see that happen, Wayne? You see it on kickoff returns. A runner will run into the back of a pile and not actually get tackled, but everybody just kind of settles down and stops. Then he pops back outside and takes off for big yards. 54-yard run by Bunch, the longest run of his career. John Vaughn, number 25, has gone back into the ball game. Now they've got a combination of Vaughn and Powers along with Bernie Leggett in the wishbone look on second down and goal to go from the six. Desmond Howard at the bottom of your screen at wide receiver. Vaughn all the way to the doorstep. Inside the one, one official on the far side started the signal touchdown. But I believe they're going to mark it short of the goal line. Well, he got into the end zone on one hop. <laughs> yeah. And they're marking him down. We've got a uh, Michigan grad who is uh, assisting us up here, and he had the touchdown. <laughs> Look at the end of the run. Vaughn hits the ground yeah. and bounces into the end zone. That's a good call by the official. Absolutely. Gain of five, technically, on that play. Got a little bit more than that. Six. 16 left to go in the game. Michigan leading by 10. Looking to pretty much salt things away. Lots of beef on the front line. Great key in the backfield. Bunch. Did he make it? Not even on the reach. Credit the Gophers. They have not given up an inch. Williams and Jackson and Seabree all in on the stop. Forcing Michigan into a fourth down. Michigan fans screaming for him to go for it. I don't think there's any question. Oh, you're, up, yes. you're up by 10. A field goal really doesn't put you up by that much more. You still got to score twice. And with the way their defense has been playing, I think they got to go for it. No doubt. Fourth and inches. trying to stop the inside run. Look at the block out front. John Vaughn wisely bounces outside and scoots to the corner. Nation's fourth leading rusher has been frustrated and slowed by a lingering ankle injury throughout the second half of the season. It scores a touchdown here. It's scary to think what type of season he might have had if he had stayed healthy. We saw him against Iowa. He didn't play much in the fourth period of play of a tight ball game, and there was no indication from the bench that he had any great injury. And in fact, we saw him in that game arguing with his coaches, asking to go back into the contest. 
Here he is posting his ninth rushing TD of the season. He started the ball game, played briefly in the first period, <laughs> and now is back. Carlson's point after touchdown is good. Michigan extends the advantage with 5.06 left to go in the battle for the little brown jug. Wayne Larrabee and Ben Bennett at Michigan Stadium. The Wolverines have responded to a fourth period Minnesota touchdown drive with one of their own. 54-yard run by Jared Bunch, the fullback, set up a touchdown run of one yard by John Vaughn. J.D. Carlson restarting the game. Rios out across the 30 to close to the 35. Penalty marker down. There's Dean Dingman. First team Kodak All-America selection this year. We Here's the uh, touchdown here. Look what happens to Dingman on the touchdown. This is a situation of live by the pancake, die by the pancake. <laughs> Very difficult to keep a good man down, especially if you're Dean Dingman. Watch the power in this guy's leg. Whoop. <laughs> That's 260 pounds he just hoisted into the air. I don't, I don't even think he felt it. The <laughs> point being on that first replay is that it can happen to the best of them. Yeah, right? It does. <laughs> From the 21, Minnesota, trailing 35 to 18. Five minutes left to go. Chester. for a completion out across the 35 and a first down for Minnesota. Let's go back to Tim in the studio. Very interesting news in the Big Ten, Wayne. At halftime, Ohio State leading, but by only four against Barry Alvarez's team. And Michigan State and Northwestern, it is now 9-7 for Francis Pays Ball Club. Very interesting scores in this uh, November Saturday afternoon that we're underway with. Wow, very interesting indeed, especially that score from Evanston. Schaffner hits his man under the coverage. He stepped out of bounds. Uh, Steve Cambrace on the reception, and Anderson had the coverage for Michigan. It's to be a gain of about six. John Gutekunst, his team has played hard here, and they have not given up. Michigan's made some plays on him. But... Gutekunst knows with this young team he has, the better days are ahead. Well, he has to be pleased with his defense. Even though they've given up 35 points, they've made Michigan earn those points. Schaffner releases over the middle. Grant. Kevin Grant down to the 46-yard line of Michigan. Chris Bone, the linebacker, on the stop. Gain of about eight yards. Another first down for the Golden Gophers. We talked about Shafter being a master of the short passing game. You're seeing what he does best right now. Unfortunately for Minnesota, they don't need short passes. They need big points. Football at the 46-yard line in Michigan territory. Shafter. Over the top to Grant overshot him out of play. Let's head down to the sidelines. And Brad Lupton. Would you pay for a piece of this end zone turf? Well, it might be auctioned off because this is the last game for this eight-year-old artificial surface. You see, next year, Michigan is going to go with a natural grass surface. The Board of Regents just decided that on Thursday, they're going to go with this prescription turf from Purdue University. It's going to cost them $1.2 million. We better hope they have a lot of people that want to buy part of this. Uh, Wayne, this would look great in your living room, don't you think? Well, I'd say I, I don't like that stuff any better than the players do. I tell you, Brad. Although I might, that M looks pretty good. I like the uh, formation of that M. Second down and ten. Foggy covered up at the forty. They're going to put in grass next year. One game too late. Chris Wilbur who went out earlier with an knee injury. The All America. And I promise you, there's about a hundred football players that are clapping their hands right now, saying thank you very much. Because, folks, AstroTurf and knees just do not go together. Yep. Just, I mean, so many more injuries occur on turf than they do on grass. 
it's just, I, I think it should be outlawed. And I, really I think the most dangerous turf I've seen, this is not good here at Michigan, but the one at Northwestern is absolutely dangerous to play on. Like green concrete. Schaffner hammered. Martin Davis untouched from his outside linebacking position. His second sack of the day and seventh of the season. Loss of eight. The play action fake is supposed to hold the linebackers. One linebacker it didn't hold right there. You also oh. saw Schaffner slip a little bit on that turf. But he would have been a dead man anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he was finished. Yes. Confirmation time for Dean Coffin. Going for the corner, keeping it away from uh, has been Howard and a beautiful kick indeed inside the 15 to the 11-yard line where the Wolverines will put it in play. 3.09 left to go in the battle for the little brown jug on a gorgeous partly cloudy day in Ann Arbor. Coming up following this ball game, Tim Brando will update you on what's going on, and then it's Penn State and Notre Dame. That is our big attraction this afternoon, 4 o'clock Eastern time from Notre Dame, Indiana, South Bend. Auburn and Georgia in prime time tonight. Another great SEC matchup. Plenty of football left. Uh, you know, last night watching Dick Vitale do the Duke game, I don't know if he was more, more excited about doing the basketball game or about going to Notre Dame to watch him play Penn State today. I met his daughter the other night at Notre Dame. Fine young lady. She's an excellent tennis player, a freshman down there. Erbach. Dennis Washington, a sophomore from Lorain, Ohio. Pick up on that play of about four yards. Coming up, scoreboard show with Tim and Lee. They'll get you caught up to date on what's been going on in the early afternoon around the country as well as set the scene for the next two games to come up here on ESPN. Set the scene for the game. In the land of the Golden Dome, baby! The PT! <laughs> Isn't it great to hear him, though, again? Oh, you ought, to, you ought to see him when he goes to Duke. They pitch him around. They throw him up oh. on their hands and throw him in the stands. It's great. College basketball. Second down. Out of the eye. Power. Yeah, this impressive freshman is close to a first down. Back to the sidelines. For an update with Brad. Brad? This is this is the fabled little brown jug, and here is its keeper, equipment manager for Michigan, John Fall. John, what's going to happen with this? Well, we hope that as soon as this game's over, the seniors are going to come over, and the captain, they'll pick it up, and they'll take it back, and they'll keep it in Michigan for another year. Is there any water left in it? Uh, no, I think it's dried <laughs> up by now. It's uh, got a lot of history behind it, as you can see, 1903, when it started, and then uh, here we are today. And the ones, that, uh, the ones that live in our heart were the two we lost. Okay, back to Wayne and Ben. 2.59 left to go. We'll be back. <laughs> Wayne Larrabee, Ben Bennett, 2.59 left to go. Michigan trying to secure the little brown jug for another year. This will be the fourth time in a row they had beaten Minnesota in this game. First down, just across the 21-yard line, Wolverine territory, Elvis Gerbach, still a quarterback. Ricky Powers in the offensive backfield, reverses field. Powers made something out of nothing. I mean, he made about five yards out of nothing. Seabree and Ocree on the stop for Minnesota. One of the traits a good running back will have is vision of the entire field. Power saw that there was nothing strong side, knew that there was room backside, had to make a couple of moves, but he hit the brakes and got forward. Can you imagine the one-two punch of these guys for the next three years? If they can keep both of them happy, I mean, really. They, I, like I said, I think they need an extra football when those two guys are around. And as much as we talked about John Vaughn and Ricky Powers, let's not forget Alan Jefferson, the senior, is also a very good tailback. Alan Jefferson injured uh, today. Not playing, but uh, the other running back, the other senior who sees a lot of time, obviously, the starter, Jared Bunch at fullback, made a big 54-yard run to set up a Michigan score on Seniors Day. Very appropriate that he would do that on Seniors Day. 
That's a, an important day. People don't talk about that in many programs, but it's very important to this program. The seniors in their final game at Michigan Stadium. It's a very emotional day. Absolutely. Your last game in the stadium that you played at for four years is a day you'll never forget. I, I remember my senior year before our last home game, running out, all the kids holding their hands down to slap them. I couldn't hold the tears back. You, Ben? Believe it or not. Showing emotion like that? Hey, I eat quiche, too. <laughs> Who would have thunk it? <laughs> of course, you are a quarterback out of the ACC. Second down. Yeah, Sugar Second Bowl. and about four for Sugar. Michigan. Yeah, Sugar Bowl. <laughs> Bernie Leggett. Taken down by Ben Williams. Penalty marker down away from the play late. Some extra pushing and shoving going on. The officials step in right away to clear things up. And again, a marker down. Stepping in to clear things up after that offensive line has cleared people out. What's happening is Dean Dingman and Greg Skrepinek are driving their guys eight, nine, ten yards down the field. And they're just getting frustrated. You know, you see Dingman, the All-American, Skrepinek at 6'6", 322 pounds, is the largest player ever to strap on a Michigan helmet. They said 15 yards first down. Face mask penalty. And Skrepinek, as you see him right there on the screen, was actually the preseason All-American by everybody in everybody's uh, team. He was the player that everybody was looking at. Dean Dingman, all Big Ten last year, came on this year, and we talked to Gary Muller, and he said this guy has just been on a mission. He's played possessed. He came off his shoulder surgery last year. They weren't sure how he was going to do. But this is a guy that wants to be the best football player on the field. First down now for Michigan. Out of the 45. Gerbach. Williams nabs him from behind. Ben Williams makes the sack back near the 39-yard line. Loss of six. Interesting call with less than two minutes left in the game. A first and ten. You've been running the football very well. He wanted to go deep to Alexander, but Alexander had gotten tripped. Michigan sacking their opponents. 49 sacks. Opponents sacking Michigan quarterbacks just four times. The sack and the sack knots. <laughs> I think some of the fumes are getting into the boys in the truck. Michigan leads the Big Ten in sacks. And fewer sacks per minute. Elvis Gerbach on the sideline talking with Gary Bowler. The timeout was taken by Minnesota. Stop the clock with a bit of 49 to go. And speaking of the truck, Wayne, since this is our last Big Ten telecast of the season, we'd like to thank the uh, fellas down in the truck. Right now, let's step out and go down to South Bend for an update on the game coming up. Now, well, apparently, we're not going to have time to do that because the uh, game here is resuming as Michigan it's back into the huddle. We were going to throw it to the guys at the other game, but our guys in the truck are just talking about it. They said, no, nah, let's stay here. Let's not talk about it for a little while. <laughs> We'd like to thank everybody connected with our telecast throughout the early games this fall. That's the Big Ten and the Ivy League. Very, very good crew. People behind the scenes in the truck. Done a great job. Second down. About 16 now for Michigan. Ricky Powers. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Sean Lumpkin wouldn't let him get away. I, th I thought for a minute Ricky might be able to turn it up the near sidelines, but Lumpkin, the all Big Ten safety, stayed home and made the play. Yeah, that, that's a sign of a great running back. When he can make a five-yard loss, that exciting. That exciting, <laughs> exactly. Five-yard loss is right. There's the jug in a secure place at the moment. You know, Gary Mulder mentioned something about that. He said, you know, our kids really didn't think much about the little brown jug until in 1986 when the guys from the other side came over and took it away. Yeah. Then it started meaning something. Like those old love songs, you don't know what you've got till you lost it. <laughs> Turn down and long. I'm getting kind of punchy up here, Wayne. You are. <laughs> you've been hit a few times, Ben. <laughs> Gerbach, little razzle-dazzle, pass Ben to get by Drenon Main. 
Ortiz. And finally, Frank Jackson escorted him to the chalk mark. The human highlight reel, Desmond Howard on the reverse. Now watch this move, running full speed. Boink. There it is. Oh, sorry, he missed me. Up the sidelines, he's trying to he's turn it on. Let's see what kind of show I can put on. And he's only a sophomore, folks. 25 yards on the gain to the 41-yard line of Minnesota. Final 48 seconds coming up. Michigan leading 35 to 18. Notre Dame and Penn State coming up next following Lee Corso and Tim Brando with an update on the scoreboard. Colorado Springs, Colorado. Bernie's going to be the fullback here next year. Fox Hoffman made the stop. Final 33 seconds winding down to the clock. Minnesota fought hard, but in the second half, Michigan was far too much. Michigan trailed 10 to 7 at halftime, and they are wrapping this one up 35 to 18. One more snap, perhaps. Final second ticking away. Jared Bunch, the senior. And that's going to do it. The Wolverines have retained the little brown jog, the oldest trophy in college football. For Ben Bennett, this is Wayne Larrabee. Special thanks to the athletic departments at both schools and our crew. Michigan wins it over Minnesota to retain the little brown jug.